Every car enthusiast has at some point wondered what driving a go-kart on the street would feel like. Well, some people didn't stop there, they actually built a street-going go-kart. You might have heard about the growing automotive niche subculture known as exocars. The concept is simple. Take a donor car, remove the entire body and build a custom tube frame chassis on top. Throw away the safety, aerodynamics and all the body panels, AC, your radio, carpets, just basically everything in the pursuit of ultimate lightness. Now why would you destroy a perfectly good little sports car? Well the idea behind this is creating a sports car with supercar rivaling performance but for a price most of us can actually afford. For instance, you can go on Facebook Marketplace, buy a Miata or an old Integra, something small with a decent engine, take it home and use this car as a stress reliever, rip off everything, build a frame and play around with the powertrain, either modify it or swap it for something better. The results, well let's take a look. The first example of an exo car I ever saw was Cletus with Leroy. This is or at least this is what's left of his C5 Corvette. The C5 Corvette has a fully drag built motor and two massive turbochargers. Now this thing still has a manual gearbox and even with its manual gearbox it completes the standing quarter mile in 7.75 seconds. That's crazy fast. But when I looked into this further, I saw that most of these builds are more track and handling focused builds, inspired by the Lotus 7. Exocars implement the same formula legendary brand Lotus started to use decades ago, simplify and then add lightness. So where these builds differ from Leroy is that with these cars the power to weight ratio is the main focus rather than an ungodly amount of horsepower. So it's almost the same concept superbikes use. A superbike only produces 180 horsepower, but because they weigh almost nothing, they are insanely fast. Now some of these people building these cars are able to get the weight down to around 600 kilograms. Couple that super lightweight with a B-series Honda engine, or better yet, a K-series, and you have a little monster that will make GT3 RS's quiver in their pants. Let's just do the math quickly. A stock standard B16 engine makes 180 horsepower. And because it's a tiny little 1.64 banger, it's really light, so ideal for this type of car. Now on these engines, without even introducing a turbo, you can get around 220 to 230 horsepower, add a turbo and upgrade the internals, and you'll have a reliable 450 to 500 horsepower little monster. Now 230 horsepower in a car weighing 600 kilograms has the same power to weight ratio as a 997 Porsche GT3 RS. If you are insane enough to build the motor to 500 horsepower and add an all-wheel drive system, which will add weight, but like you'll need that, that four-wheel drive system to actually put the power down, um, it will also make the build much more expensive, but in doing that, you'll have a hypercar killer. But I feel like the 200-ish horsepower build is more achievable for your average person. This is the easiest and cheapest way for us average Joes and Janes to experience true supercar performance. So should all of us go outside now and start cutting away at our cars? Before you do, here are some negatives. Firstly, insurance. Good luck explaining to the insurance company why your car doesn't have a dash or bumpers. Or just tell me how are you going to convince them that this is a Civic? Next, cops. You'll be pulled over by every cop around every corner. So the car might be stupidly fast, but going anywhere will take longer. There's more. It's not really that cheap. You will need the extra money to buy a second car. You can't do this to your daily. Why? Well, you know, sometimes it rains, um, and I'm sure your girlfriend won't be very happy if you pick her up in this thing. If she does, she's really cool, but most girls just won't. Anyways, I digress. The frame you have to build should be made professionally. Remember, this is the only thing keeping you safe, because everything else is like taken out of the car. Then the engine mods ain't cheap, wheels, brakes, and all of that. Then you should get life cover for when you inevitably put it in the side rail. The list just goes on. And it doesn't stop there. Let's do a negative speed run. Okay, no cup holders, no AC, so warm days suck. No windows or doors or roof, so cool days suck. No radio, so long road trips suck. No windows, so the wind will kill you on the freeway and your face will act as a bug catcher. If you crash, you'll die and the car is practically worthless. Finding somebody that's gonna pay money to buy this is gonna be a bit more difficult than trying to sell a normal car. Okay, now for the positives. 
which is also important, remember. You never have to wash your car because there's nothing to wash. It's fast. It's really fast. Children can use it as a jungle gym. You can hang your wet clothes on it to dry. It's cheap and it's fast. So at the end of it, let's ask the question again. Should all of us go out and cut up our perfectly fine cheap sports cars? Yes. The answer is yes, obviously. There are some negatives, but there was a whole bunch of positives too. Sorry, I think I'm very funny. Anyways, if, if you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. Um, if you like the idea of exocars, let me know down below. I do like the idea. I just don't think it is for everybody. Like, if I'm honest, I would love to build like a, a, a tube chassis and put a proper engine in and everything. I just don't like the idea of cutting up a good car like an MX-5. I, I like MX-5s. Fives. I don't want people to cut them up. It makes me sad. But yeah, leave a like, subscribe. I'll check you guys in the next one. Cheers, eh?